This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Okay, please stand. <clears throat> Welcome all of you to our chapel here at St. Paul Monastery. We also welcome thus those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. Today we gather on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth
of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus. Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call each of them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be a suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up in its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them shall be one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. who fear the Lord and walk in God's pathway. You 
will find what you long for, the riches of our God. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. Your spouse shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. May the blessings of God be yours all the days of your life. May the peace and the love of God live always in your heart. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels. That by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, 
and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I begin my reflections this morning, I ask all of you to pray for Brother Peter. Brother Peter is the brother that usually sits up here during our Mass and greets you in the back of church. Last Monday evening, we took him to the emergency room with flu-like symptoms, and when he arrived at the emergency room, he had a cardiac arrest. And so he is now in an induced coma in the critical care unit at St. Elizabeth's downtown. It is a very touch and go situation, so we ask that your prayers uh, be with him uh, at this time. Today's readings speak to us about marriage. And so first of all, I want to thank all of you who are in marriages or were in marriages. We thank you for your witness. We thank you for your marriage. We thank you for uh, witnessing to the sacrament that we have in the church. A couple of weeks ago, we had our Holy Family Triduum, our three days of prayer up at the National uh, Shrine, the Basilica of Our Lady of Lebanon. And at our opening mass, we always have the opportunity for the married couples gathered there to exchange their wedding vows. And so it's a nice ceremony to start the whole festivities and we bring them up around the altar and the women go first and then the men. And it's an opportunity. It's not just for the Holy Family. Uh, John Pasternak and his wife uh, have been coming for a number of years because they like that particular ceremony that's in there to commit their relationship that they have. And our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in his document, Joy of Love, that spoke about marriage and family life, looked at the marriage bond, and he looked at one phrase that all of you said in your vows when you were married. We will honor, love, and obey all the days of our lives. That's in our psalm response. We ask that the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. And so that mantra will be part of what I share this morning. Because the first thing that you bring to us is that you're in a very unique relationship. It is relationship as we see in our first reading today from the book of Genesis, that's basically ordained, is basically created by God. Man and woman come together. They form one flesh. They give forth life. They are meant to be with one another. They are to be joined together because they are flesh of flesh, bone of bones. So they are coming together. So you witness to this very unique relationship. And it's a relationship that the two of you have as spouses, but you also bring in the relationship of God into that. And only you have that relationship. I have a relationship with my brothers and sisters, but it's not a vowed relationship with them. I have relationship with my priest and brothers in this community, but it's not a vowed relationship because you have taken the vows that you are going to commit yourselves to one another, you're going to love one another, you're going to honor one another, you're going to obey one another all the days of our lives. And this doesn't mean that it's becoming a soap opera, even though your lives might be a soap opera from time to time. But it's a witness, and it's a witness to all of us. So the second aspect of your marriage is that you have a vocation. It's a vocational call given to you. We talk about vocations in the church. We pray for priests and brothers and sisters in religious life because we need that vocation, those who are called. We talk about those who are single persons who are called to remain single for their lives. But then we honor today all of you who are in marriages, in the sacrament, that you are called by the Lord and you have accepted that responsibility. So you witness to Christ's love for the church. You witness to us that bond that you have with God and with one another. And it becomes a witness to many people. 
So you are vocation, you are call because you help to extend that call to others. You are witness to the church, you are witness to the state, you are witness to your family and your friends. So as all your families and friends gather around at your marriage and at your wedding, they are there to see the love that you have for one another, the love that God has for another. The other day, Father Jeff came into town because he did a wedding of his uh, cousins yesterday. And when he came back from the wedding rehearsal on Friday, I said, well, you're all ready. And he goes, Ooh, I don't know. He says, I don't do weddings that often, which we don't do in our congregation. Most diocesan priests do it. He says, and the thing is, they had nine bridesmaids and nine groomsmen. And so he says, I had to figure out how I was going to maneuver all of these people. But I saw him yesterday. It went well. I saw the pictures on Facebook, and they all seemed to be a very happy couple, happy family, because the family was united around the sacrament. The members of the church were witnessing. And so that's what you do in witnessing in your vocation that you have received from the Lord. And finally, you are a light to all of us. You shine on us what can happen if we all fulfill our obligation of receiving the grace of God in our life and to act upon it. And so you witness that the grace of God is in that relationship that you have. You also show that you have to work at it all the days of your lives. It takes a lot of commitment for the ups and downs on the journey that you have as you're looking at your relationship, as you bring life into this world, and as you witness to the Lord in the life. Now, our Holy Father and ourselves also point out that sometimes the marriages do not work. We do have people who are divorced, people who are separated. And in that document, Joy on Love, let me emphatically state that the Holy Father did not change anything in the church law about separated and divorced Catholics. Because that's what everybody focused on. What he did say, however, is that those who are divorced, those who are separated, are still members of our Catholic faith. They still need our help and our prayers and our assistance. So how can we as pastors reach out to them and bring them the grace of God? How can we journey with them as they're doing with their pain, with their suffering, with the brokenness that they may have in their own lives? And so we need to work with them. But beyond that, we see that you witness to us in your married life. And so today, we again thank you for your witness, thank you for your sacrament, thank you for your presence, and we thank you for the unique uh, vocation, the unique relationship you have, the vocation that you witness. You're a light to all of us, that all of us can see that Jesus Christ and his grace can come to us in whatever our journey, whatever our vocation, and he will journey with us all the days of our lives. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we bring our needs before God, who created us and remains in us, who loves us and forgives us from the beginning to the end of time. For the church, that we may be a sign of communion between God and humanity, and a means of cooperation between all people, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and leaders of the church, that they may guide the faithful in following the way of the Lord and in building up the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering and for all those in our community who are ill, especially for Brother Peter, that the dying and rising of Jesus may bring them healing and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Synod on Young People, that God will inspire all the participants on how to draw young people closer to Christ and to open new opportunities for them to use their gifts in service to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of tensions and conflicts in our society, that God will lead us to a new appreciation of one another and help us to witness to the fullness of God's plan as we work together for the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and for an end to armed conflict, the leaders of nations may strive to find new ways to settle disputes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray the intentions of this Mass, let us remember Kathy Petrilli, for whom this liturgy is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Also, this month of October is a month of Mary. It's the month of right to life. And today is officially in the church, celebrate Our Lady of the Rosary. So hopefully you will participate in praying and supporting right to life and using the rosary as a prayer that brings you closer to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, listen to our prayers. Guide us in accepting your divine will as we trust in your goodness and mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Spirit contrite as will be accepted by you. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. 
Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us turn it off to each other, a sign of peace. peace of Christ 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 God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
now we remain with Jesus the Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Something which we have known. seen with our eyes this we have heard life giving word we hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts living the Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ he chose to Christ. give of himself of the body of he came our bread broken that we might live Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Again, we thank all of you for being here with us at the St. Paul Monastery. Those who are joining us over Ecumenical Channel, I thank our musicians, our readers, our technicians. And again, continued prayers for Brother Peter. People have asked me he would be 82 at the end of this month, so he's 81 years old. So he is in critical condition. We ask for your continued prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.
worship you today and sing the love amazing that songs cannot repay for we can only wonder at every gift you send at blessings without number and mercies without end we lift our hearts before you and wait upon your word we honor the society of saint paul announces a new book on padre pio by italian journalist stefano campanella the director of Padre Pio Television gives readers an intimate insight into this saint who Pope Francis appointed as one of the great patrons of the Jubilee Year of Mercy. This edition can be found at St. Paul's Books and Gifts at 926 Boardman Poland Road, located across from the Olive Garden Restaurant. This book on Padre Pio talks about his time in the Sacrament of Confession with countless of Catholic pilgrims and as a contemplative saint whose life was blessed in countless ways. Visit St. Paul's Books and Gifts Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. or call 330-953-2443 or email at stpaulsbookstore at gmail.com to learn more about Padre Pio and many other great saints of the Catholic Church. for the past couple of years. Um.